Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Civilization VI Rise and Fall. Uh, sorry there was no episode yesterday. The beginning of my week schedule got pretty screwed up by the fact that Elise and I came down with something at the end of the weekend and it sucked. And I am feeling uh, better. I feel, I'm feeling somewhat better. I was going to say a lot better. The somewhat better is maybe more honest. So we're back. Uh, we have Chandragupta here leading India and we're heading for a religious victory today. This is something that some people wanted to see, and I think it's going to be an interesting challenge, and we'll talk about why during the loading screen. Uh, but for now, our bonuses are, we can declare a war of territorial expansion after gaining the military training civic, and we get plus two movement and plus five combat strength for all of our units for the first ten turns after declaring such a war. A war of territorial expansion is one of the latest uh, Cassus Belli that you get access to normally. I think it's in the modern era. Uh, military training, on the other hand, is Classical Era, so we get this way earlier than everybody else does. And the only, the only requirements for you to trigger it, I believe, are having two of your cities within ten tiles of two of someone else's cities, so obviously it's very easy to meet the requirements. Uh, that combined with the fact that, uh, this big bonus, combined with the fact that our unique unit is also Classical Era, might mean that we can push another player out of the game early, and that will be particularly valuable to us if if we have a, a neighbor that has founded a religion because we're gonna have some we're gonna have some trouble with the religious victory a little bit at the beginning I think so the unique unit I'm talking about is the Varu the elephant cavalry it is a heavy cavalry unit that unlocks on horseback riding the very first uh, the very first cavalry tech it has a higher combat strength than the horseman and it also has this adjacent enemy units receive minus five combat strength thing but it costs considerably more than a horseman as well. So we don't want to probably make an army that's entirely Varu. We'll want to be like Varu and horsemen and archers, but it's a powerful classical era thing. We might, like I said, we might be able to get some, some early violence accomplished here. We also have Dharma, which gives us the follower belief bonus of each religion that's present in a city rather than just the dominant religion. I do not have a good read on how powerful this is. We'll have to keep an eye on this and see exactly what we're getting out of it over the course of the game. And finally, we our builders can create the Stepwell tile improvement after we research irrigation, I think. It gives plus one food and plus one housing, which I believe is better than a farm at the, at the beginning of the game. I think farms are one food and plus 0.5 housing. And then it gives uh, an additional faith if adjacent to a holy site and an additional food if adjacent to a farm. So... We're going we're gonna to want to dot these throughout our farms uh, early on. We're playing on Deity, standard game speed, shuffle map type, because I wanted to really up the unpredictability of the map. And let's go. Let's have at it here. I'm going to mute the game. Sorry, Sean Bean. Uh, so we can talk about why I think this will be an interesting challenge. So we just got done playing two civilizations that have relatively strong, fairly strong, linear strategies. Obviously, when you sit down to play Korea, the game expects you to do a science victory. The devs built this thing for you to do a science victory with, and they gave you all these tools for the science victory to make you better at it, and that can be fun. I enjoy playing those like linear strategy games and trying to just optimize, see how effectively we can do it, how well we can cope with the weird stuff that happens all around us while we're trying to build our rocket ships. But there's also a lot of civs in the game, like Chandragupta's India, or like the Netherlands, which I'm very interested in playing, that might be the next game we do, um, that don't have that don't have all of their tools sort of aligned in the same direction. Our bonuses are sort of all over the place, right? And so we're going to have to figure out how to build the strategy we want to use. So let's uh, let's unmute the game here before I forget and get back in uh, get into this. So the first thing I notice about this start is that we have stone. Which means we could go for Stonehenge. Do I want to try that? Kind of think I do. Okay, so let's talk about Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a wonder that must be built on flat land adjacent to a stone deposit. When you build it, you get a great profit. Um, this will mean that we don't have to try to play the great profit points game in the early game. It'll mean we get to, uh, we get to focus things a little bit differently. Because my suspicion is our religion's not going to be very powerful right off the bat because we don't have the massive free faith generation that a lot of the civs that are built for religious victories have. Even 
uh, India, when led by Gandhi, has a bunch of faith generation because Gandhi's ability gives you a lot of free faith. So getting Stonehenge, I think, would be really cool for us. Uh, now, the AI prioritizes Stonehenge pretty highly, although different AIs do it to different degrees. So I'm not sure how long we have to build it. My suspicion is it will be built before turn 30. That would be that would be my guess. That's a pretty a pretty sensible pace. I think we can do this. So we're going to research astrology first. We're going to follow it up with mining. We're going to get a builder. And then we are going to uh, begin building Stonehenge as quickly as we can, the moment it becomes available to us. The builder uh, will, once we have mining, uh, the builder will build a, a quarry on the stone, and then we'll chop down a forest to help rush the, uh, the Stonehenge out. I think we probably have to move the settler up to here so that we don't obliterate the forest when we first settle. That moves, that moves us further away from this nice two-food, two-industry uh, tile. And into a location where we don't have a lot of really good tiles. Hmm. Maybe that's not a good idea? No, I, I think we're going to try it. I really wish that the river extended one tile further back. This is where I want to settle. But I do not want to settle in lo a location that doesn't have the freshwater housing bonus. And then we do have a tile here that'll be pretty good for a holy site because it has three mountains adjacent. Um, so even if we do whiff on Stonehenge, um, we will get we will get refunded some amount of the production we put in, and we can use that to just drop a holy site immediately. Or the holy site can come afterward is is also fine. Yeah, we're gonna try this. I'm right that this this tile is not considered to have fresh water, right? Yeah. That's a shame. You would think that there's this tiny little source right here, but no. All right, well, let's do this. We really can't afford to uh, to kill the forest. We need, we need it for the Stonehenge. This does put us within three tiles of horses. That's something. All right, so we have to be a little bit careful here. Uh, we're going to have to go Builder first. And the reason we're going to have to do that is that if we were to find a natural wonder while scouting with our warrior, we, we definitely want to have the builder finished before we start building Stonehenge. Uh, getting the boost for astrology is definitely a best case scenario. We might be able to find a natural wonder. We also might find a tribal village that has the astrology boost in it. That's a possibility. Uh, we found a tribal village that had a bunch of XP in it. Well, that's also good. Now, we have to be a little bit careful. Because we're not building a military unit first, we can't really range our warrior out as far as I normally do. And in fact, I'm a little nervous about even crossing the river here. Because obviously, if we were over here looking for city-states, and then a barbarian scout showed up there, we could be in a lot of danger. But, also, uh, it's... It's really, really important to try to meet city-states. It's really, really important to try to get as many tribal villages as possible. All right. So we can see this is a cliff, which means these tiles are water. So we're not going to be able to loop around this mountain range, but also we can see a border here, so we should, we should at least step this way. Oh, you're kidding me. It's turn seven, and this city-state has already met another player, so we don't get the free money. That sucks. And their quest is awkward for us. Okay, well, that's pretty bad. It looks like we're not going to really get any early scouting bonuses here, then. We might get lucky. There might be something right over here. Well, alright, I'll take a tribal village. You are such a jerk. Must you be in my way? Okay, we got plus population. That's a pretty good one. Yes, yeah, so the first thing we're going to do with our builder is we're going to go and uh, make a farm. Okay, and actually building our holy site here and farms here means that this will be a good step well location. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... It looks like we're on kind of a, like a weird island or a peninsula. Because this is all beach right here. 
Yeah, well, we're close to a city-state that's close to another player, but it looks like we may, we may not have to deal with a lot of other players ourselves. So unfortunately, it's going to be another six turns before we have access to astrology. We can put six turns of production toward a settler. I'm a little bit less concerned now about barbarians. I see that this coast runs right up to this mountain. I think we might be safe-ish up here. We'll put some production toward a settler that we can finish quickly after we go for the Stonehenge play. The fact that we're not getting a boost to astrology, though, makes me feel like we're probably not getting this. Oh. Huh. Well, that's not something we really needed. Uh, still holding out hope that I would find a, uh, a coastal great wonder, you know, the Galac er, uh, natural wonder, the Galapagos Islands or something. Well, obviously, we're going to need discipline and urban planning. Okay, 40 gold's fine. Huh. What do we want to do next? You know what? I think we probably want to go to Early Empire for the Settler production bonus. Because we are going to delay the second settler quite a bit. May as well produce it quickly once we are producing it. You know, I'm going to scout around a little bit. Actually, never mind. It looks like we've hit the end of what we can see. What tile are we picking up next? Well, that's not the one I was hoping for. Here, let's, uh, let's make some more farms. Okay, there's some decent terrain on the other side of this mountain range. Unfortunately, we actually don't have a way past it. Even if we uh, even if we become seafaring, we'll have to go into the water here because there's so much cliff. This is kind of a weird start. This is what you get when you uh, when you put the map settings on shuffle. Okay, that was lucky. I was not expecting to deal enough damage to get the kill there. Alright, so we're about to pick up Astrology. Let's queue up Mining for directly afterward. Yeah, we have too many builders. <laughs> I wish that I had built something else. We did not have the information necessary to know that that would be the play, but... Uh, so when you... Uh, scouts, Barbarian Scouts, generally will not attack or take your civilian units or pillage your trade routes until you destroy their camp. Once you destroy a camp, the scouts that were spawned by that camp immediately become actual aggressive units. Uh, so that's why that scout is trying to uh, commit suicide against our warrior. Oh, I didn't start Stonehenge. Well, if we lose it by a turn, now you know why. 30 turns... Okay. We need mining very badly. <laughs> yeah, we just don't have a lot of options as far as um, tiles with production on them go. How much is it to buy one of these mountains? Okay, we'll be able to... Or one of these hills. We'll be able to do that next turn. So let's make sure that we're... Working all of the tiles that have some production on them. We'll be able to get another point of production once we have mining from improving here. We'll be able to build a mine there as well. Alright, 22 turns is not, is not good enough. Not getting the boost for the tech really hurts. That said, obviously there are still things we're uh, we're doing. We're not we're not done yet.
City-states are already being killed. Lisbon's about to die too. Man, they gotta do something about the AI. Just being able to take as many city-states as it wants early in the game on higher difficulties is not... Uh, when you find means the only city-states are city-states that are in a place where there's no players. Okay, well we're sort of sequestered away from the rest of the world here. Guess let's get animal husbandry, that's valuable to us. Alright. That helped a little bit. Get some extra production. Way to chop this forest now. And hopefully it will be good enough. Turn 35, that's not... That's probably not going to be good enough. Well, like I said, if we fail this, it'll give us a bunch of... You know, it'll refund a bunch of our production. We'll use it to just drop the holy site immediately, and then we'll... We'll see how things go from there. We might be able to make it happen. Three city-states defeated very, very early on. Yeah, there's not really a tile that we could buy that would be terribly helpful here. Oh, it's the Zulu. Well, that's not great for us, probably. Not to say that Shaka will definitely be a bad neighbor, but I'm certainly concerned. If there are no dogs in heaven. Well, it's turn 31 and nobody's gotten it yet. Maybe nobody's going for it. Maybe we maybe we just generated a a low religion group of uh of AIs. Let's work toward irrigation, both because I want my step wells and because we do have uh we do have resources that we need to build plantations on. We're getting awfully close to it. And now that I've said that, uh, it's going to be torn away from us. That's the positive aspect of trade, I suppose. I mean, still... Still were these, and still it's available. Let's, like I said, grab early empire. Wow, we are about to get the latest Stonehenge I have maybe ever seen in a deity game. Okay. Hey, it worked. We <laughs> we did an okay job, I guess. Six hundred people into helping you. I uh I like this. This is good for us. This probably means that there's no other religious players, so we can't actually found our religion until we have a pantheon. Uh, Stonehenge is generating two faith per turn. And I mean, yeah, there's no there's no other religions founded. We'll see how things work out. How are people doing on great profit points? Okay, so some people some people are working on it. Yeah, that's weird. That's a lot later than you usually get that. Okay, we do have to build our holy site, obviously, but I think that it behooves us to expand first. We can't we can't be on one city forever. Unfortunately, this is going to happen way before early empire. No man ever wetted clay. So we need to have a number of cities. We need to have a number of functional holy sites because we need to have a lot of faith generation, and that's going to come from uh, it's going to come from number of holy sites rather than uh, effectiveness of holy sites. We also need to get sailing like, pretty quickly here. So where am I going to found? We could actually put the city down right here and just reach over here with border pressure. But I think let's let's found on the river. Probably this is an okay tile. This will give us a reasonably good harbor. because It'll be buffed by both the city center and the pearls. It uh, gives us access to more coffee, which we can trade. The farm right there. We might end up founding a city over here as well. Ooh, you can see there's a uh, fish on a reef. That's a pretty good tile. Yeah, I think let's let's find the second city right here, just as close to the capital as can possibly be. How much does a builder cost right now? A ton. This is part of what I was talking about. We just need more cities, man. 
All right, let's get our holy site up. We need to start generating faith. But maybe I need a builder first. There's a lot of stuff that still needs improving. And we need traders, but we no, we got to get our holy site up eventually. Somebody made the hanging gardens. Yeah, I think what happened here is just that the AI was not particularly focused on making Stonehenge happen, and we, we just kind of caught them with their pants down a little bit. Oh, have we properly met Shaka? We have. Wait, sorry, you, you won't turn your back on your armies? Is he going to fight us the entire time while looking at his own guys? That seems counterproductive. Okay, well, a boost to writing is fine. So we're going to normal age, probably. Uh, that is okay. I think if, if we're going to try to do a heroic age slingshot, it makes a lot more sense to go dark age third, heroic age fourth, than it does to go dark age second, heroic age third, because, uh, first of all, during the second era, you're not really ready to take advantage of the Dark Age because you don't have slots in your government for the Dark Age policies until about halfway through the era. And then uh, by the time you're in the fourth era, you are way more ready, like way more established and ready to do some great stuff with all of the powerful dedications you get. So I think if we're going to try a slingshot, and I don't know if we are, uh, it makes sense to... Uh, it makes sense to just normal age here and dark age next. All right. What do we want to build here? Well, first of all, let's make sure we're working the right tile. Yeah, okay. And we're going to need a lot of builders. I definitely don't want to make the trader here. I want to make the trader in the capital. We could start working on our next holy site. We can get a little adjacency bonus from the forests going. We will need to. I kind of want to put it here, right? But that is third rank of tiles. So we're looking at 60 and then 90. So yeah, I'm going to hold off on the holy side, I guess, because I want to build it here. So instead, let us work toward a builder. I mean, we're going to need a bunch of builders. I don't think we need very many military units. After irrigation, we have to go sailing. We have to get the ability to get out on the water. Well, maybe not. Uh, ignore this request. Sorry, who do you think you are? I'm on the other side of a mountain range. Actually, there's no way he could even know about that city. Yelling at me about nothing. And unfortunately, there's, yeah, there's actually nowhere we can go. I guess I didn't actually step here. We might be able to see one more tile out. Maybe we'll see a landmass. But there's not really anything else for us to do with this warrior until we have the ability to go across the sea. So it won't be too much longer until we have our Pantheon. But I think we don't want to actually found our religion until the next era begins so that we can... Well, if we're going to try to Dark Age the next era, which we might. Oh, hey. You've completed your civilization's first holy site with a starting adjacency bonus of three or higher. Yeah, that'll... That'll work. I kind of forgot that that was a thing. But yeah, high, high adjacency districts. So we need builders to make the step wells. We also need a trade route so that our other cities functional sooner. I think that's probably a higher priority. Okay, we hit six population. Both of our cities had a uh, had a birth on the same turn. And uh, we do we do need builders to get our luxury resources online though. We're starting to feel pretty miserable. Okay, so this will be... Hmm. I don't know what we're going to pick. Unknown players founded Protestantism. So our Pantheon belief is going to give us some amount of resources from our, uh, from our surroundings, basically. It's how these work. So you try to find one that fits well with your starting terrain. We do have multiple sources of coffee, 
So you get some extra food from that. It's not great, obviously. Uh, we only have one stone, right? Like we, yeah. Picking a bonus from quarries doesn't seem that great. I guess there's two more stone available in the other city. So we could take this stone circles and get six faith eventually from our quarries. Doesn't seem great. Uh, we could take God of the Sea. We don't actually have a ton of places to build fishing boats in our first two cities, but this city will. God of the Sea is a production from fishing boats. That's not a bad way to go. Um, we could also take something a little bit more generic, like plus 10% city growth rate, by which it means uh, population growth rate, or plus 15% border expansion rate. Uh... Unfortunately, none of the ones that give faith really fit with our terrain very well. We can take God of War. Bonus faith equal to 50% of the strength of each enemy unit killed within eight tiles of a holy site. That's... It doesn't say they have to be our holy sites. If this works when I'm attacking enemy units near enemy holy sites, that's maybe a little better. But even in that case, I don't think this is great. And we could just take, since we can't get one that really gives us anything great, we could just take God of the Sea and try to optimize for it in our future cities. Divine Spark's not terrible either. Uh, plus one great person point from each of your campuses and theater squares helps to offset the loss of campuses and theater squares that comes from spending the time to build holy sites. Uh, and if you get your Pantheon really early, this can also help you grab your great profit. But I think I am going to take God of the Sea. It looks like we're on more of a naval map. I think we can make good uh, take good advantage of this. We just haven't really yet. Man, I kind of wonder if we should try to Golden Age, then Dark Age, then Golden Age. Because we could now found our religion. That was plus one error score. Founding the religion will be worth another three. Take us to 19, and then we'd have four points to or four turns to find five more points. That's not going to happen. Ooh, hey, turtles. Oh, look at them. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very easily distracted. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm not. We're not going to make the Golden Age, but I am going to go ahead and found the religion. So, hey, I didn't... Uh, yeah, so when you found a religion, you can pick a real-world religion and it fills in the name for you, or you can pick one of these sort of animal pantheons. Uh, I think we don't really have a choice, given what just happened. This is the only thing that I really believe in, apparently. Alright, so our core belief, all world wonders inspire plus four faith. That's, uh, you know, that's not totally amazing, just four faith. Um, from our Stonehenge, but if we were to get one or two more early game wonders, this could be uh, this could be quite powerful. Uh, relics have triple yield of faith and tourism would be great if we had found a relic, or if I thought we could get some in trade or something. Unfortunately, we don't know enough players to really even try that. Uh, you can get food uh, or culture from your basic religious buildings. Both of these I think are quite good. But I think we are desperately enough in need of faith that I'm going to take Divine Inspiration. And we just got to remember to try to get another wonder or two before too much longer. And then there are three other categories of beliefs. This is our founder belief. I believe these are the follower beliefs that are referred to by our Dharma ability. And there's three categories of them. The ones with these like hands clasped in prayer are religious buildings that you can build. The ones with the book are more about getting free resources from the spread of your religion. And then finally, the ones with the candle are all about either spreading your religion or augmenting combat based on your religion. Um, you get one belief from each of the three categories. But we only get to take one now. Uh, after we can build apostles, once we have temples and stuff, uh, we'll be able to get beliefs from the other two categories. So we could... Take a, a religious building, like we could grab synagogues so that we could get a lot of extra faith. All of them give plus three faith and then something else 
In the case of the synagogue, it's plus three faith and also plus two faith. Uh, these are better than synagogues. Yeah, okay, they're better than synagogues as long as you don't let them get uh, pillaged ever, I guess. But we can also get, like, plus amenities, plus housing, plus food, plus science. We might want to take plus science. There's going to be a little bit of a military bent to our game, and so... Uh, making sure we have up-to-date units could be important. We also could take the mosque. Give our missionaries and apostles additional spread religion charges. You know... Since we're not going to have the faith to buy as many as a lot of other players do, having ours be more effective might actually be a good way to go. Or we could grab something else first. So plus money for each city following the religion. Each holy site or theater square district in a city following this religion provides plus faith or plus culture. Plus two faith for every city following this religion in every other civilization. When you send an envoy to a city-state, it adds religious pressure. That's an interesting way to seed your religion across the globe. Uh, the other thing that I might consider is taking Defender of the Faith, because a lot of the AIs really like Defender of the Faith, and it can be a real bummer to have to fight through it. So taking it away from them, uh, making it so they can't have it, might actually be worth doing. Now, I, let's take the Mosque. I, I like the idea of our... Missionaries and Apostles being more effective since we'll get fewer of them. Alright, and we're not quite going to Golden Age here, and then we will maybe Dark Age next. We'll see. It's going to be a real slow game for a couple of minutes, though. Just waiting. I guess we should, like, relocate this warrior to be a little bit more central in case a barbarian encampment spawns at one of the far corners, you know. Another city-state defeated. Huh. A ceremonial... Ikluwa. Ik... Ik... Ikluwa. Ikluwa. Yes, your uh, delegation, your delegation with your gross weapon souvenirs, is most welcome. I guess. I suppose. Okay. So shrines will help with the faith as well, and they. Uh... We need amenities. Yeah, we need. We just need builders. Okay, we also get to assign our first governor. So I haven't really looked at what the religious governor does. First of all, double religious pressure from the city to adjacent cities. That's fine. Uh, plus 10 religious strength in theological combat is very good. So theological combat works a little bit like normal melee combat in that, you know, units have a strength and it's compared to the other unit and the damage is based on the difference between the two. Uh, but there are actually very few things that provide religious combat strength. So this seems very powerful. The governor's religious units heal fully in one turn in Tiles of the City, also really powerful. Religious units uh, get their get their faith back pretty slowly. Apostles trained in the city receive one extra promotion. Really, really good. Plus 20% production toward holy site buildings is less exciting. And city ignores pressure and combat effects from religions not founded by the governor's player is actually, I think, pretty weak. This means that the only way your city will gain uh, an enemy religion is by uh, units running up to the city and pressing the spread religion button. But that actually is generally how the AI spreads their religions, just by building a ton of religious units and doing spread religion over and over again. So this one I'm less excited about, but uh, the rest of these seem quite good. That said... We're not going to be ready to start actually like pushing our religion for a little while, so maybe he's not the first one we pick up. Oh, we could get uh, we could get her. You know, we really need is somebody who's going to help us uh, expand over the ocean a little bit. Double adjacency bonuses from. Yeah, she's okay. She'll let us generate extra food from water tiles. That's something. 
Uh, this won't get the benefit of our Pantheon because it's specifically the fishing boat improvement that gets the extra uh, industry, but honestly... Yeah, you know what? I, I think let's take her. We're currently building builders in both of the cities. Uh, we may want to devote one turn of production to something else just to make sure this gets done after she establishes because I don't know I don't know what the ordering on these is like which of these will happen first so let's like let's build a monument for one turn right I think I, I think I want a monument more than I want a shrine yeah just to make sure that the builder comes out after she is established and we need theology theology is where the faith building that allows us to purchase apostles and thus improve our religion is but we also need a better more functional government I mean, let's get that first. By the way, this is military training. This is where our War of Territorial Expansion unlock is. They really ought to make it so that that's visible on the Civic, the way that unique units are. Okay, we need to actually be able to embark units. So, shipbuilding is important. Celestial navigation is also very important for us. Writing is also very important for us because these... Texts are starting to get expensive. I guess let's work on writing next. Let's see if we can get a couple of decent campuses built. This isn't a bad campus spot. Okay, the Zulu's also normal aged. So if we're going to try to dark age here, we want to pick something that we're, we're going to, we want to pick a dedication that we're not going to get a lot of. Uh, it's pretty easy to get your Rikos through the classical era. They still come from stuff that you're doing naturally. We'll probably get a couple of uh, of what do you call it inspirations. We'll probably build some districts. Honestly, we might not convert very, very many cities. I'm thinking our second city will convert just due to pressure from the trade route. But that aside, we're not going to be building religious units for the purpose of charging into other people's lands to convert them or anything. So I think I think we will get two or more points from all of these, and I think we'll get exactly two points from this. So let's see if we can intentionally Dark Age, Third Era, and then uh, come out of it swinging in the Fourth Era. Oh, I forgot to change this back to a builder. Oh, we had some uh, industry rollover, which was why this was only going to be five turns. Well, whatever, that's fine. We're actually starting to accumulate an okay amount of money. Writing is easy. Quite far away from buying anything that really matters, I guess. You know what we do need to buy, actually, is some ships. A galley would be 260. All right. It would be nice to have a galley. We should probably push for harbors, I guess. We could use the extra money from a harbor in Madurai. Okay. We could also go currency for trade routes. And get money that way. But I think we're going to want both of our cities, cities to have a harbor. Uh, here because it will actually have a decent adjacency bonus. And here because we want to be able to produce ships. So harbors it is. Unless I want to get shipyard or shipbuilding first. Well, we're going to get the boost from this actually pretty quickly. Because so we're definitely improving both of those pearls. And then we'll trade one of them to Shaka and that'll help finance buying ships, I guess. It's just a real slow build for a minute here. We can probably. Uh, swap in the production toward builders thing, given that both of our cities are making builders. And we'll have state workforce in nine turns to swap that back off. I think it'll be fine. I don't know, maybe I should have put in the plus production towards settlers card. And we still can. So it's recommending I build a step well here. Not here, adjacent to the holy site. Seems like an odd choice. Oh, that's right. 
our unique tile improvement. We made our we made a unique thing for the first time. We got a bunch of error score. Oops. Well, that's fine. So as you can see, this tile's become pretty all right. Unfortunately, it's plus one food if adjacent to a farm. Not one, not plus one food for each farm to which you are adjacent. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Okay, we probably need to make a campus. I think I would rather make it here than here, just in case we do decide that we want a commercial district for whatever reason. Or actually, there's a number of wonders that have to be built adjacent to the city center. Oh, we're probably, we're, yeah, we're still locked into uh, industry mode here. You know what? That's fine, actually. All right, so I think I want to... I guess grabbing the coffee might have been a good idea, so that way, as soon as this builder's out, we have two amenities from luxuries. Eh, whatever, it's fine. We are going to have to buy this tile, though. I really do want to get trading with Shock. I want to be making some money here. Well, there's our Celestial Navigation boost, and... Huh. We went from we went from him disliking us to not not having an un oh it still says unfriendly when I mouse over where the little face would be the face has just become invisible that's strange well how would you like some of this All right if I don't want open borders but I do want more gold per turn wow ah uh, money let's make this like. 50? I'm not sure what, uh, how well they value GPT. They might, I, there was a long period where they weren't doing the math right in Civ 5, so I guess we'll see if that's the case here. Yeah, all right, that's fine, I guess. No, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't really need open borders with him. Okay, that'll help us, uh, that'll help us get closer to buying a ship. We did have to spend a bunch of money to to get that but i think it's worth it this tile is pretty all right now with the sh with the fishing boats and the god of the sea production on it oh that's right we're gonna do this well i think this is actually this is probably more worth spending the money on than the ship is we really need our faith production up it's getting to a pretty okay place it's getting it's, it's we're getting a start in on it Okay, you need to get your city some production. So Patna's going to be able to make a uh, a harbor pretty much... Well, not right away. I was going to say pretty much right away. When we get to seven population, we'll be able to make the harbor. Because we've already used our two district slots for now. Uh, so that's not too far off. Yeah, it kind of looks like we got into a situation here where our war elephants are not going to be optimally useful. Alright, do I want to make more settlers? I'll probably make more settlers as soon as the campus is done. Rather than building the library, we'll, we'll just get out here and found, like, right here, probably. Then we can build the harbor there. Take, take great advantage of these tiles. Yeah, that seems like an okay way to go. 28 turns on this. Okay. Our other city could use the one extra production, frankly, but we gotta get the settler done as quickly as possible because we have other stuff the capital needs to build. And we have a new governor title. Would I rather make it so that you can build fisheries or start... Uh, start work on that cardinal because he does need a couple of promotions before he's going to be really good. The ability to move her to a new city and have her help with the production of the first district that might be valuable enough to to take infrastructure for even. Yeah, you know, let's keep 
Let's keep growing Liang for now. I gotta say, we are not... We are not super killing it right now. Our growth is slow. So we have one charge left on this builder and the other builder's gone. It would be a good idea to go pick up those horses probably. I'm oh, we don't have a farm on this on this rice yet. That is that is what we want to use our other charge on. So we're actually getting pretty good growth here. Alright, you hold on. Let me stop, stop popping stuff up in front of me. Okay, we need housing. Well, the farm will help with that. Alright, I think shipbuilding is next. We just really need to be able to explore. Yeah, farms are half a point of housing. And now we can build a step well here and it'll be a little bit more effective. We should probably put a step well up. Uh, this, this might be a spot where we end up putting down a district. I guess we can put up a step well in the interim. Lots of other stuff we need to build, though, like our culture output is still bad. Yeah, let's finish the monument, I guess. No, let's build the settler. Remember? That's what I was going to do. That's the plan. Yeah, it's going to be an uneventful classical era for us, I think. We're just sort of intentionally falling into decline. <laughs> Somebody has made Apadana. It's heartening to see another just as pious as myself. Okay, so whatever his hidden agenda is, it involves faith generation. Let's have a quick look at the religion thing here. So Sikhism, Eastern Orthodoxy, and Protestantism. So okay, so Shaka did not get a religion. So we can probably spread our religion to him fairly easily. We can see here all of the beliefs that all the other people got. Uh, everybody went for religious building first. Not a huge surprise, I guess. Although, you can't actually take advantage of the religious building until after you have temples. So I guess it's not necessarily the case that that's what you should build. Okay, I think right here is the right answer. This lets us get a really good harbor, lets us get the horses immediately, puts us close to the coffee, we still get the crabs eventually. Uh, and... We just gotta start getting our yields up, man. So it looks to me like it shouldn't be too hard for us to uh, stay under the threshold here. The Dark Age should be able to should be able to make it happen. I don't think I want to run a trade route until the new city is founded. Then we want to start the trade route out of the new city that turn. We do still need to get our science up as well. Yeah, we can't uh, we can't build a mosque until we have a temple. We do need the shrine because the shrine has to precede the temple. But I also think we want the library. Wow, the Oracle went on turn 76, huh? That's a pretty good wonder. It's a lot later than I was expecting. We should have gone for that, maybe. I didn't realize that the AI uh, built it so late. Although it might not be an every game thing. Okay, uh, I guess let's just start it on the harbor. Like, we're going to want it. It's going to produce a bunch of era score for us. So if it looks like it's going to finish before the end of the era, we'll pull off of it. But we got to put a lot of production toward it. When are we getting our next governor title? Okay, it doesn't have to be terribly far away. So we might uh, we might want to move 
Liang over to here, is what I'm thinking. Because the next time she gets a governor title, she's going to be able to increase the production toward districts. Alright, you finished your holy site. It's like one of the most valuable Dark Age policies is the one that makes your domestic trade routes incredibly good. So I think we should try to make sure that we have uh, as many domestic trade routes as possible prepared for that moment. Okay, even if I convert both of my cities, we'll still be pretty comfortably under the cap. So I think we can afford to run the trade route to Patna, even with the religious pressure. What does it cost to buy a builder at this point in the game? 260? Okay, we're heading in that direction. I'm going to go ahead and reassign uh, Liang over to Calcutta. Once she gets there, it, it won't be too much longer before we can buy a builder. And the builder will have an extra charge, and we'll, uh, we'll build fishing boats that are extremely powerful on these tiles. And, like, fish on a reef with a fishing boat that has the God of the Sea bonus seems extremely good. So I think I'm just going to go straight through shipbuilding. I'm not even going to get the galleys. Era ends in 10 turns. Okay, we have some decent science running now. We have a little bit of culture income. We're not really close to housing, so let's get that shrine. This seems like the time. But once we find a new landmass, with our, with our scouting warrior here in a minute, we can think about the next settler. Yep, just a lot of really uneventful turns here. Divide and rule a sound. I have to say, this is not quite how I was expecting things to go, but this is why I like doing these um, these shuffle and fractal map games, is because you really can't plan ahead that well. You have to sort of adapt to the, to the map as you find it. And that's, I think, one of the most fun parts of these games, is the exploration and figuring out how to use the map part of it. I think we're going to take Classical Republic. I pretty much always take Classical Republic unless I am currently engaged in a war. Plus 10% production toward Wonders is pretty cool. But also cool is housing and amenities. And yellow policies. Yellow policies are really good. So... Plus one production in all cities wouldn't be terrible. We could take plus two gold from our one trade route. I think that's probably not the right play. Uh, the first envoy you send to each city-state counts as two. Seems like a fine way to go, given that we have no uh, envoys currently anywhere in the entire world. And then, like... Honestly, none of this stuff is relevant at all. Um, we'll just build up influence points faster? We could get... You know what? Plus two gold is a reasonable increase in our gold by percentage. We'll run this for a little while. We could also run God King instead. Actually, a faith and a gold is probably better than two gold. Once we have more trade routes, things will be a little different. We definitely did not want to delay taking our government. I don't think that that would have been worth it. Okay, so now that we've got political philosophy, we need to head toward theology. We need to get our temples. All right, just sort of a nice, uh, a nice slow, languorous start to the game. All right, we can now embark, so it's time to go exploring, and it might be time to produce a scout or something. Um, or once once we have our harbors in place, you know, shipbuilding becomes available to us again. It's just that the coastal cities are very busy right now. All right, so if we're thinking about religion, thinking about wonders, we're thinking about ships. Quadrimes are pretty great. We might end up uh, doing some naval conquering at some point this game. I think mass production is going to be very valuable for us because the shipyard uh, shipyard's very helpful. I guess we're going to go through currency, probably. 
I'm thinking education into mass production is maybe the way we want to go. We could just, we could try to go straight to caravels. And that would give us potentially um, access to a lot of islands before the AIs can get there. We're actually going to get this boost. You know what? This is not a thing I would usually do, but we're doing a lot of things I don't usually do here. That's what this game is. Plus, this has a wonder on it that other players probably will not be in a hurry to get because they don't get cartography all that early, so... Maybe we can make something really cool out of this. So we gotta find a path of shallow water that leads basically anywhere. If we are on a kind of an islandy map, it is often the case that you can get around pretty well via just shallow water. Uh, but it might be that we're on a, a more normal, like, continent-style map, and we just got a weird terrain generation that blocked us off from everything. I guess we'll find out. Time to start building a harbor. Four turns, okay. Well, three turns in a second here. Right, the Mahabodhi Temple is a religious thing. Our religious victory is uh, potentially going to involve a bit of violence. Uh, it may be the case that other players are really establishing their religion right now, and we will have to we'll have to we'll have to do a little bit of conquering to get past that. Because you know who's really good at theological combat actually is guys with swords. And I think that uh, that holds up in real world history. Okay, so we did it. We dark aged. We need to make 19 points to get to a golden age. We're about to get some pretty good stuff going on here. We're about to get a big boost from a very powerful harbor completing. Uh, our dedication may well uh, may well make it very easy for us to get this done. So we could take free inquiry. It's all the same stuff. Given that we know the Zulus didn't found a religion, and it looks like the Zulu city that we the Zulu city we can see is still not religious. This might be a good time to take Exodus of the Evangelists and like actually intentionally spread religion. We're going to need, I think, probably in the neighborhood of five to six hundred faith to finish our religion up, to buy the last couple of uh, beliefs. And then after that, we can spend all of our faith for the rest of the game on converting cities. So this might be a good way to go. We also obviously could get Free Inquiry and, and Penbrush and Voice are both pretty easy to get some points on. Monumentality, we are just about to develop three new districts. And then after that, we're probably going to want a holy site in Calcutta somewhere, probably like here because it's adjacent to forests. Now, my suspicion is monumentality is not going to be that great for us. It's it's probably not going to be as much as any of the rest of these. I say let's go for Exodus of the Evangelists. We haven't converted either of our own cities to our religion yet, and they will convert soon, I'm sure. Uh, we can we can push that. Now, I may have underestimated the base cost of apostles. Well, let's not do any manual religion spreading until we know what's up with our apostles. So we are five turns away from being able to get temples, and then we can we can see what apostles cost and figure it out from there. This is a weird, very uh, a weird, very insular little start. Oh, we should probably do some of this stuff. So domestic trade routes up. Uh, so you can start Inquisition with one apostle charge. Religious units have bonus combat strength. Science doubled in cities with holy sites, but minus 25% culture. Well, we're pretty... Our, our culture is pretty important to us right now. We really need to get the temples established. Uh, this is cool, though. Uh, but I think we're just going to take the classic isolationism for now. We already are not interested in uh, training new settlers or settling new cities in the immediate uh, future. That will, at the very least, speed up this harbor.
Oh man, there is not a lot of shallow water around. We are actually going to have a really hard time finding a settleable landmass. Okay, we definitely want to get each. Man, 16 turns, huh? I'm going to say we definitely want to get our lighthouses established as quickly as possible because we want trade routes, obviously. We also do want to get more than one temple. Yeah, all right, build the shrine. I gotta say, I'm not totally in love with this start. I think it is fine. Oh, that's right. I was gonna buy a builder. That's what I was gonna do with our money. Well, I'm still going to, I guess, but it's, it's gonna be a little while. The builders get more expensive over the course of the game, as you are seeing here. You can definitely build a lighthouse. Need more trade routes. So we know that somebody built the Mahabodhi Temple already, which means that we know that somebody got the theology uh, civic a long time ago. All right, here comes a big burst of era score. Sailors and stevedores shout and sing shanties all along the bustling wharfs in the harbor of Calcutta. Yeah, money per turn starting to get really good. I would love to get the uh, Colossus because trade route capacity is the best, but I do not, <laughs> I do not think it is reasonable for us to try to build this. Well, we can at least get a better view of some of Shaka's lands, I guess. Okay, now we finally get to buy our builder. We'll have lots of important things to do. What would it be for us to veer off and grab this temple instead? I probably want to finish the lighthouse, right? But we need to know what the cost for our apostles is going to be. Well, you know what we could probably do here? Current cost for missionaries for us is 150 faith. Okay, so we're seeing stuff at the base cost. I was just making sure that there wasn't any kind of modifier applied. So these guys are going to be 400 faith each. So actually we... Hmm. We don't necessarily need to evangelize all of our beliefs. It might be worthwhile to just get one belief uh, whatever one is best for spreading our religion and then use the rest of our faith on missionaries to make sure that we get some spreading going because the more religious pressure we're putting out uh, the easier it will be for our religion to spread without us having to spend faith on additional units let's buy one missionary right now just to get it started and then we probably want to start picking up more uh, more governor titles, but from now on, probably focusing on uh, focusing on our uh, bishop or cardinal, whatever his whatever his name is. Yeah, the cardinal. Okay, we definitely want to get that tile improved because it's going to be great. I think I'll put uh, I'll put one spread religion charge into Calcutta, and then we will uh, we'll let Madurai be converted by pressure from both sides. So I do we do need to get into the way the pressure system actually works. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I may I may do some digging between this episode and next. Look at that! Look at that beautiful tile. Okay. Nah. Oh good, Korea's here. Well, I'd be lying if I said that didn't make me pretty nervous about the amount of time that we have to get things done. I guess the religious victory is usually something that you win pretty early on. So, I guess I don't necessarily need to be too worried about her going to Mars without us. Uh, will Shaka take a declaration of friendship? Yeah. Awesome. I have indeed proven myself a true friend by staying over on my side of the mountains and not causing trouble.
So you can see the cities will convert in time just due to natural pressure. And in fact, these cities are both going to convert in fewer turns than there are in the era. So let's not waste charges on them. We'll, uh, we'll drop into the beach over here and we'll convert some Ashaka stuff. I don't know for sure that he's going to like that, but I also do not extremely care whether he likes it or not. Ah. Too broke to buy my tiles. Alright, so it does look like we're pretty islandy. That's uh, Zanzibar, the city state over there. Looks like Shaka is building some kind of water wonder here. Is that going to be the Colossus or it looks like the Great Lighthouse? Yeah. I guess I can just mouse over it. I don't have to guess. All right, this is actually going to convert naturally as well. We should try to find a city that's a little bit more distant and lay down, basically, uh, if we lay down like a bunch of our religion over here, it will increase the pressure on Lisbon because it'll be getting it from more sides and we can uh, we can end up with more total cities converted for the same amount of units spent. I don't think I want to build a step well out here given that it will receive none of its additional bonuses, although I guess we do need housing pretty badly, don't we? Hmm, well, we can build a stepwell here, then a farm here, then a stepwell there. Yeah, the fact that we have no, um, no freshwater housing benefit in Calcutta means we probably have to make some plays that are not totally ideal in, uh, in order to get our housing online. Because it's already pushing against the limit, right? Yeah, it's pretty close. It was soft capped until we built that stepwell. There we go. Alright, we'll start building our temple here now. Or... We'll build the trade route. We can let Calcutta finish, finish the lighthouse, and then Calcutta can build two trade routes in a row. That's probably reasonable. We need to get, uh, we need to get our temples online, man. We gotta get those... Oh, we gotta get those apostles out. That's not a bad deal, but I'm actually not that far off of getting dyes myself. I'll take open borders, but we could we could maybe sprinkle a little bit more gold in here. Maybe a lot more gold in here? Wow. Uh, 15? Holy crap. She really wants these pearls. I wish this interface was a little less cumbersome. It turns out 15 was, in fact, the number. Yes, I will take your 15 gold per turn. I wonder if she's in a really bad place as far as, uh, as far as amenities go. Well, this all being cliffs is kind of annoying. It looks like there's a beach over here. Wow, Shaka put that great lighthouse together very quickly. Who's this? Okay, so Tamar is a faith-based Civ, I believe. Georgia, rather, is a faith-based Civ. So I think they probably founded a religion? Oh, well, maybe not. Uh, religion. So we can now see... Eastern Orthodoxy was Georgia, in fact. Korea did not found a religion. Okay, it's the other two players who have the other two religions. That's potentially really good for us. The fact, that, uh, the fact that the two players who didn't uh, found religions are near us may mean that we have an easier time building up sort of a stronghold for our religion. So in seven turns, we will be able to start producing apostles. Apostles are very powerful. Yeah, we really, we really need to get our cardinal online. Look at these people all founding cities and trying to be good at the game. Don't they know all you have to do is truly, deep in your heart, love turtles, and the rest will follow.
Okay, well, we've seen what we're going to see over here until we get some uh, open borders treaties. You know what? I'm sure Shaka will give us open borders. We can go out through his territory. Uh, what would it take? No, what, what would it take? He added one gold per <laughs> No, what do you want me to pay you for the... <laughs> okay. Shaka is not a statesman. How about this? Okay, good. <laughs> that was uh, that was a weird interaction. Okay, so hey, I, I don't know. I, I was gonna say what else do we need to do, but actually we're fine, I think. So what does it cost to buy another trader? Okay, so we won't actually have to build this other trader. I'll just buy it in Madurai. Yeah, we're getting stuff established. We're a little smaller than I would maybe like, but we started in kind of a weird place, so. So he has holy sites. He could buy religious units. He just doesn't have his own religion, which may mean that if we give him our religion... Hey! Hey, turtles! If we give him our religion, he might spread it for us. We'll see. It used to be the case that um, AIs just really like to buy religious units. They want to use their faith on stuff. And if you gave an AI city with hol with a holy site, your religion, they would start buying your uh, start buying your apostles and missionaries and using them. Although obviously, if they have their own religion, they have some feelings about that. So it looks like Shaka may not be very large. Like he also got a little bit. Uh, is the version of a little bit frustrated by the weird landmass we started on. And we did not quite get enough religion pumped in there to actually flip the city. Yeah, unfortunately, okay, we're predominant, but not enough. You know what? We're going to get another missionary. I really wish that this city uh, was already the religion, because we can't buy missionaries there right now. Okay, let's buy an, a missionary for more conversion and an apostle. Oh, you know what? I should I should build my mosque. We'll have plenty of time to take advantage of the uh, uh, take advantage of the extra spreads. The real question is, actually, do I want to buy the trader here? I think I do. Because I think I want to try to push the uh, the production of the mosque using the trade route. So we definitely want to grab the Cardinal. And we will appoint him in the capital because it's the only place that's actually the right religion. And now that we have this governor title, what we really need to be working toward is divine right. Uh, once we get to divine right, we'll have access to a couple of, uh, a couple of faith wonders, and then we are actually headed for Reformed Church, which will give us extra religious strength and theological combat. It will allow us to, uh... Wow. Plus 0.5 faith per citizen in cities with governors. That's a fairly large bonus, actually. But we also need to make sure that we get to three governor titles on our, on our cardinal here. So I might want to grab defensive tactics as well. And then we have to get guilds on the way to Reformed Church anyway. Do we need med medieval fairs for that? We don't. So yeah, let's grab defensive tactics. That'll give us another governor title, and then we'll, uh... Oh, no, you know what I should do, actually. Uh, sure. Your delegation is most welcome. Well, what I should do is get my extra governor titles from government plaza buildings. So, actually, never mind. Let's head straight for Divine Right. Divine Right's not even that good of a, uh... A government for us it's just that it's a prerequisite for reformed church oh yeah barbarian camp spawned that's annoying so we're probably gonna have to buy a military unit
Alright, so we can hit the Evangelize Belief button here and add one belief to our religion. And I believe that going up to full beliefs, hitting, doing it one more time and getting maxed out on our beliefs, will actually give us some error score. So that could be another source of push. I think we're, we're making some progress. Obviously, we're going to get a bunch of error score when all of the cities start flipping, which they are very close to doing. So, missionaries and apostles are cheaper to produce. You know, that might be a good way to go for us. Uh, the passive spread of your religion can go further or be considerably stronger. Cities start with this religion in place if founded by a player who has this as their majority religion, or culture bomb adjacent tiles when completing a holy site. What culture bomb means is just immediately get the tiles. So when you, whenever you build a holy site, you'll claim all of the tiles touching it. That's not great. I kind of like holy order for us. Uh, we can get this extra payout stuff later. That'll make it cheaper for us to finish our religion. Uh, I think at this point I'd rather run this trade route out of Mudrai. Well, what are we going to build in Calcutta? Hold on, let's decide that. We could still go for the Colossus. What do I think the odds are that that's going to work? Thirty-two turns plus we could get the extra production. You know what? Let's try. Let's go for it. Remember, it'll be a source of considerable faith if we do manage to pull it off. So let's run the trade route out of here. Twenty-four turns. We might be able to make that happen. And we're going to need a military unit. We're going we're to need better military units, actually, is what we're probably going to need. Well, we got to finish the mosque, though. That's important. Oh, hey, we're like way past the hour. Zulu and Korea just declared war on Sumeria. Okay, well, you know what? If they end up wiping out a uh, a player who built a religion, that's actually fine by me. We have no way of fighting barbarians right now. We gotta <laughs> we gotta research some units. Let's get Varu. Kind of a silly position to be in, I guess. Okay, yep, definitely keep running those routes. How are we doing on spread? Okay, this is going to convert in four turns. I'm not sure why the conversion rate for this one went down, but once Madurai is converted, it will exert extra pressure on, pressure on Calcutta. Oh, hey, if we click... Okay, we can see extra information. Alright, if we can turn this city with our uh, with our next three spreads from that uh, from that missionary it'll help to turn lisbon which will mean all of these will be pretty pretty tightly ours and then we just need to watch out for actually there's another city there too and then we just need to watch out for um protestant missionaries or eastern orthodox missionaries coming in and screwing things up which absolutely without question will happen we got kind of a long uh kind of a long fight ahead of us here, but I think things are going all right as long as we don't get completely wiped out by these barbarians. It's all right. We have enough money coming in. I'm sure we'll be able to buy some Varu. Anyway, that's going to have to be it for us for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you are excited about the possibilities here. I think this game could be really interesting. Come back next time to see if we can uh, convert some of our closest friends to our love of turtles. And we'll see you then.